Hello and welcome to our webinar today. We'll get started here in just a few minutes. We're excited to have you and looking forward to a, a great session, nonprofit webinar, Getting Board Ready. We'll get started here in just a few minutes. You're just joining. Thanks for joining us today. We're going to get started here in a few minutes. Today's webinar, Getting Board Ready for Nonprofits with Sage Intact and LBMC Technology Solutions. We're looking forward to a great session with you today. people still joining today. If you'd like to take advantage of the chat and let us know where you're joining us from, that would be great. We'd love to know where all of our attendees are from. I'm here in our Nashville, Tennessee office. Hello in Tampa. Hi, Augusta. Several folks in the Florida area. Welcome. All right, we're here at the top of the hour, so feel free to keep dropping that in the chat. Um, I'm your host today, Nicole Brinson with LBMC Technology Solutions, and I'm excited to welcome you to our webinar today. Are you board ready? Getting board ready for nonprofits with Sage Intact and LBMC Technology Solutions. I've got just a few housekeeping items before we get started. Um, this webinar is eligible for CPE, so if you are seeking CPE credit for this webinar, please ensure you answer all of the questions. We will be taking questions at the end, so feel free to use the Q&A function or the chat feature um, there on your screen. If you have any technical issues, please put it in the chat. Uh, we'll try to address those as we go along. After today's webinar, you're going to get an email from us, and that's going to contain the slides, the recording, and a link to our survey. Please allow up to 48 hours for, um, for that to come through. And then on the CPE credits, if you are eligible, you should receive an email with your certificate within two weeks. If you don't, you can reach out to me directly, nicole.brinson at lbmc.com, and I'll include this content in the slides that we're sharing. Now, please help me welcome today's speaker, Brian Wilton, president of LBMC Technology Solutions. Brian is a lead responsible for our strategic leadership on sales and marketing and our ERP solutions. Brian is a regular speaker for the Kansas Society of CPAs, the Texas Society of CPAs, as well as um, the local organizations here with Microsoft. Brian, thank you for joining us today. All right. Thanks, Nicole, and welcome, everyone. Hello. Good afternoon, good morning, depending on where you are, and welcome to our presentation today. And I hope you find it educational. I hope that you see some things today that maybe you're not able to do with uh, the solutions and systems you have in place today. And uh, I think that there'll be something for everyone here. So even if you uh, don't think you uh, could possibly see anything that you don't have or don't need, you're just browsing. I think there'll be enough today that there's something for everyone, I think, that's on the uh, session today. So thank you again for attending. It's uh, hard to believe we're almost halfway through June. 
which means we're getting close to halfway through this year. So um, time uh, is marching on here into 2024. So uh, Nicole, if you wanna go on to the next slide here, we'll kick things off. Thank you. So we're focused today on kind of the accounting system, which falls under that ERP kind of enterprise resource planning uh, bullet there. And of course, ERP is a lot of things to a lot of different people. But at the end of the day, every ERP solution has at its core and its base an accounting system. We're going to focus really kind of on that accounting portion today and keep things fairly simple, but, um, but uh, very sophisticated in what you're able to do, just being able to do it very simply. So, um, you know, everything at some point generally ends up in the general ledger. And so that's kind of what we're talking about today. Now, ERP or accounting systems are really only a piece, although a very large piece of what we at LBMC do to provide our clients with help and support. We offer lots and lots of other technology related uh, solutions to really help small to mid-sized organizations such as cyber attack uh, protection, you know, things that, uh, well, you if you look at the news, literally seven days a week, you see the latest and greatest ransomware attack and companies, banks, other financial institutions that have been hacked. We provide things to, from a technology standpoint to put in place to minimize that to the lowest possible risk. Of course, there's still people like us that are generally the, the keys that unlock some of those doors, but we give you all of the system things that you need to make sure that that does not happen to your organization. We work with your current IT team to provide expertise, to back that team up. Maybe it's a team of one, and that one person wants to take some time off this summer. And so we many times will step in and kind of um, be the, the second a uh, layer of support when your team is, is bogged down or tied up with projects, or if you have that team of one, they're out of the office for a week or so, and uh, LBMC can actually step in and, and kind of be that team. Of course, we do uh, the, the complete um, IT solutions for some customers of ours where we are their IT team, so we also do that uh, equally as well. Many times we'll act as a virtual chief information officer or chief technology officer. And a lot of, you know, a lot of smaller organizations, they don't have a need or the budget to have one of those folks on staff. And that usually is more of a strategic role for us to play, where we help you help the organization set the strategy for IT over the next three, four, five years. And those things that you really should be. Uh, doing or consider doing and those things that you probably can ignore and stay away from. So we help you kind of set that strategic IT direction. And of course, if you have no one to help ex execute that, then our team can step in and, and provide that role as well. But, uh, but sometimes we just act as that strategic um, partner for you. We help a lot of nonprofit organizations move to the cloud. We found that uh, outside of accounting or ERP, there's still a lot of solutions that are on servers in local facilities. And some of those are for good reason, but we do see a lot of nonprofits nowadays really wanting to be out of the server business. And, you know, those things get expensive and they wear out, they have to re be replaced every three, four, five years. And so a lot of times our clients will come to us and say, you know, can you put this somewhere and that somewhere generally means Microsoft's cloud, which they call Azure, or Amazon's cloud, which they call Amazon Web Services or AWS. And so we'll help you move those things that are still in that server room down the hall and put those into a much safer, much more protected and secure and um, uh, you know, keep the power on, uh, have backup generators, keep the internet going into one of those clouds for you. And then of course you can support that going forward or we can step in and do that as well. But um, the other thing we do is handle all your Microsoft licensing. And so, you know, we all 
probably use Microsoft Office or M365 it, as it's called today. So uh, we, we handle all of those things. We many times will do audits for folks and help them see that they might be overpaying for those licenses. Um, they have maybe the wrong version. So they have a version that they don't really need. We can help them scale that back and still have the tools that they need every day to work, but not pay for uh, things that are going to waste. And then, uh, you know, we do a lot of system reviews where we come in kind of a second set of eyes and help people really um, understand if they have gaps in the system. This kind of goes back to the cybersecurity and the ransomware issues that are just so prevalent out, out there and, you know, literally out of control today. And so we look for those openings, those gaps that maybe have been missed and kind of connect as a, a second set of uh, eyes on kind of the security of your system. So the other things we do lots of is the automation area. So we, um, we add a lot of workflow to really every applicable process in the organization. And so if, if it can be done by a person, it almost can be done today by automation. And of course, as you would guess, artificial intelligence is becoming a big part of uh, the automation and moving documents, for example, through approvals and routings and then coming back into whatever your accounting system is to be um, electronically placed in there and, uh, and then set up for payment and kind of move through the accounting system. Um, lastly is the integration area. We do lots of data integration. Occasionally, the software, whatever it might be, will not do what people need it to do exactly the way they want it to. And so we'll bend it and twist it a little bit with some customization to make it uh, flow into something or flow a little bit better into the needs of, of an organization. So at the end of the day, there's about 130 of us that get up every morning thinking about how we can make your organization better, more efficient and safer using today's technology tools. That probably is, in summary, encapsulates everything that, that we do for our nonprofit organizations. Uh, today we are talking about nonprofits. And so uh, we have almost a third of our clients uh, out there that we have uh, wrapped a, a business relationship around to help and support them, things uh, in orgs, uh, ranging from faith-based and other types of ministries, uh, healthcare, there's a lot of nonprofit healthcare organizations out there. We work with lots and lots of those. Uh, member organizations, you know, if you think about kind of the local YMCA or golf club type uh, thing where you buy a membership and, and have a relationship that could extend into private schools. We have a number of those. And then a large variety of kind of everything else. So several zoos, chambers of commerce, humane societies. There's always a, a lot of welfare organizations. Think about Goodwill, uh, Red Cross, Salvation Army type organizations. And so lots of the, 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 the uh, variety of, of uh, businesses. They look like commercial businesses, but they, they are nonprofit. And really, we help these organizations use technology to advance their causes, to kind of execute their mission on a daily basis and provide them the tools that they need to be able to do those things. And so I am uh, extremely excited to uh, introduce Linda Pinion this morning. Linda is uh, going to be kind of the keynote speaker for us today on this presentation. And she is a principal solutions consultant with SAGE today. Linda spent more than two and a half decades. Uh, that sounds like a long time when you phrase it like that, but, um, but more than two and a half decades, same as me, so we can laugh, um, yeah. helping customers, helping end users figure out the best software solution that that they can get and, and what they really need and not anything more. And today with Sage, Linda really works with partners like us at LBMC to uh, get that message out to our customers and prospective people that might be looking for software solutions. And she's a tremendous asset to us as a partner. And we're just really excited to have her 
participate in the webinar here and kind of walk us through some of those things. And so Linda, with that, I will turn the virtual stage your way. Thank you so much, Brian. You know, um, I have worked with LVMC. I've been at Sage Intact. This is my 14th year. I believe I started working with Stacy and her team um, about a week after uh, you became partners. So I think we've we've had a relationship almost as long as I've been at Intact. And that relationship has grown into lots of these types of events and I'm happy and honored to be here with you today. So let's go ahead and get started. We wanna kick this off of course, by asking a few poll questions along the way. We want to know a little bit more about you. So the first poll question here is, how much time does it take you to prepare what we're calling your board packet? You may have a different name, but think along the lines of you're pulling this together for the board. Is it five to eight hours, eight to 15, or more than 15 hours? If you would respond to that, Nicole's going to be our monitor and she'll let us know how we fare out. I'm going to bet, I usually bet with Brian on these things, I'm going to bet that it's anywhere from 8 to 15 hours. All right, we'll give it about 10 more seconds. I have to find an opportunity to answer. We'd probably be on the same side of the bet on this one, Linda, so. Okay. All right, I'm going to end the poll now. Okay. All right, so, huh. Well, I guess uh, Brian and I both are gonna be on the wrong side of the, the table here, but I'm glad that we are because that means that you're doing a pretty good job. When you say five to eight hours, uh, even though I know people would like to have less time involved here, five to eight hours is not bad and there's 63% of you. So thank you for your answers and we'll, Keep, keep this train rolling, as they say. So our topic today is really about how do we prepare for a board meeting? And just to be clear, you know, all of us may have some different bullets that we want to include in our agenda, but it's really about pulling together information and presenting that to our board and presenting it in a way that is very concise and crisp and accurate and developing any action plans based on what we've seen. So if we see something that looks a little bit wonky or out of, out of place, we wanna, we wanna have some corrective action about that. And then of course, we have to make sure that we're doing everything uh, according to all of the compliance and legal rules that we have. All of this to say that it's based on accurate, timely information. Like with anything else, if you are using information that's not accurate and you're making a decision on it, then you're really not projecting the right information. So we want to focus on putting together the board packet, but making sure that it is board ready and that it's accurate information. Okay, so let me introduce you to Sage Intact. If you're not familiar with Sage Intact, as Brian said, you know this is this is part of that ERP bubble that he was speaking to earlier. Sage Intact is a complete solution. In the core of this, you see that Sage Intact logo, but that's really made up of different areas of your business and they they are dependent on each other so when you think about how you're doing your planning planning can impact how many people you hire or what your organization looks like so it affects your payroll and hr planning also affects what you're doing from an accounting perspective planning can be not only for people but it could be a budget for office supplies and expenses and uh, things that you're going to purchase so you have those budgets set up. At the same time, we want to look at historical data. So we're building that analytical data that we can go back and look at and 
what better way for us to look at planning than to go back historically and say, this is how we looked a year ago or last quarter. So having all of this connected gives us that holistic view of the organization. So one of the things that we know about nonprofits, and this is something that you live with and, and absorb every day, is that there's a compliance issue. And that compliance requirement m means that you need to make sure that what you're doing is meeting all of the requirements. It's more than just having accurate information. It's being able to have those internal controls. And Sage Intact is so sensitive to controls and helping you with those internal controls that we ourselves have gone out and secured knowledge from one of the big accounting firms, PwC, and we've utilized that knowledge to come up with a whole compliance help center within the product that is going to outline how we have designed our product to be compliant and how to use those products and how to understand how to set up those different controls. So this is very important. We take compliancy very important and we know that you do too in your organization. So know that when you have Sage Intact, there are controls and internal compliance running in the background. Now to get that board packet, in most organizations that I've worked with, they would say that there's a process that we have to do in order to get all of that material ready for that packet. And it, in my mind, it really starts with not only our day-to-day -day activities and making sure that we're getting our work done, but it also culminates at that month-end process. So one of the advantages that you have with Sage Intact is that we are doing a continuous close. What does that mean? What is a continuous close? Well, first of all, we have a different way of setting up the foundation of our solution. We use a chart of accounts, but we use a chart of accounts that is shared across all of your entities or funds. So by doing that, as you're entering and posting transactions, we're consolidating every time a transaction is being posted. And that eliminates some of the, the backlog and the, the time that you would maybe spend at the end of the month trying to do that consolidation. You're consolidated every day, every moment as those transactions are entered. We're also utilizing artificial intelligence, as is everyone. As Brian said, it's it's all over the news. Uh, it's either cybersecurity or it's what is AI going to do for you. And of course, we want to, to automate as much as possible. We know that finance people, that's one of their top priorities, is to streamline and automate processes. And the way to do that is to take advantage of technology. So you're going to see things like electronic approvals. You're going to see us taking advantage of the Sage Banking Cloud so that you can have very quick and easy to use bank reconciliations. You'll be connected with your bank. You can have those transactions come in every four hours. You could literally do a bank rec every day if you chose to. We're going to automate some of those end of month processes like recurring journal entries, perhaps utilizing our dynamic allocations, which allows you to redistribute those costs automatically across a formula that you're setting up. So when you get to the end of the month, you're going to have just a few transactions that you need to deal with as opposed to a big pile of activity that you're going to have to work through. And of course, along the way, we're going to be messaging you, we're going to be sending you alerts or triggers that are going to automatically let you know what's going on, what do you need to approve, is there something that you need to take action on. Now, part of what you're going to see today in just a few minutes is what I call your window into how your organization is tracking, and that's what we call our role-based dashboards. 
Now, you can have different flavors of dashboards. As you look at these three different examples here, there's one that's for the controller. So if I'm the controller, of course, I want to see all things uh, financial reporting driven. If I'm a board member, there may be certain reports and certain visuals that I want to see. I don't want to see everything, but I do want to see certain pieces and having those certain pieces on a dashboard that's designed specifically for me is what I'm interested in seeing. And then we just left an end of month process screen. So having an end of month dashboard means that I can put everything that I do at the end of the month in one place. I can use those checklists. I can check to make sure where I am in the process. I can have everything in one place and then I don't need to menu travel to find those different reports and activities. So role-based dashboards, you'll see several of those in just a few minutes. Along with the financial data, what we also know is important is to have operational data. Now, for most organizations, you're utilizing other applications besides your accounting applications. It might be something like Salesforce for your customer relationship management. It could be a member management solution. It could be any number of other applications that are providing you with operational data. What we want to do is we want to take that operational data and we want to pull it into Sage Intact so that we can create what we call performance cards. And performance cards allow us to marry together financial information and operational information to give you a different view of how your organization is tracking. So performance cards are quick business insight and we'll look at those when we look at a role-based dashboard. Now there's some people that would prefer to look at pictures rather than look at reports. I know in my household I have someone who won't read a book unless there's pictures in it. And perhaps you're the same way. We all learn and engage differently. A lot of people are more apt to be engaged with a visual than a stack of reports. So giving you another option, giving you another way to see that data is through what we call our interactive visual explorer. And this is a way for you to take the data, real time up to date information and present it in a visual representation, whether that's a sunburst graph, it's a line graph, it's, there's 25 different formats that you can come up with but it allows you to see the data in a different way. And we all know that anytime there's color involved, as humans, we are attracted to that color. So we're, we're gonna be sensitive to how we build these visuals because we want you to be engaged. We want you to see that color. We want you to see what's good and what perhaps needs your action. And then of course, we're all about the pretty. We want to make sure that uh, you have the ability to design and define the reports the way you want them to look. And you have the ability to do that because these are report writing tools that are designed for you, the business user. They are designed so that you can create them. You don't have to be a programmer. You don't have to know any special coding and you can set them up where you can see the information you can see in one of these views it's color coded and so those colors are going to be some of that trigger or that alert that you're going to get that you need to take some action because of the information that you're looking at so that brings us to our second poll question and this question is about how long it takes you to close your month, I believe. Nope, this is about tools that you are going to use with planning. So, are you using Excel to do your planning today? Are you using another planning and budgeting application? Or perhaps you're already a Sage Intact user and you're using Sage Intact for your planning. So I'll give you a couple of uh, 
passes here, I'm going to say a lot of people are using Excel. What do you say, Brian? Yeah, I think we're going to be on the same side of that bet as well, Linda. I think we're okay. safer on this one, though. <laughs> well, you know, Excel is a great tool. Um, all yeah. kidding aside, there is a place for Excel. And all of our reporting in Sage Intact, you have the ability to push that data out to Excel. And on many of the screens that you're going to see in product, you'll see there's an export or there's an option for you to move that out to Excel. So Excel has its purpose. Uh, we'd like to eliminate as many Excel spreadsheets as possible for you, uh, but Excel certainly has its place. So what's the verdict, Nicole? All right, Linda, I think you were right on with 8 of our 27 uh, respondents using Excel, so 67%. Okay, Good. so Brian, Brian and I are on the same page and we're right yep. there in the Excel, Excel book yep. with you. So uh, again, you know, not a bad thing. We just would like to try to help you eliminate some of the things that you do in Excel. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna move into Sage Intact. I'll cover um, just a couple of minutes of just basic things perhaps you've never seen Sage Intact. So I'll do that first and then we're going to move right in and put our board book hat on and that's where we're going to start. So Nicole, am I free to go ahead and share my screen? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Oh, it, it says that I can't do that while you're sharing. Okay. Let me stop us right here. There you are. All right, so let me just make sure that you can see my screen okay. You look good, Linda. Okay, all right, I just need to do a couple things. Let me turn off my camera. I do that for bandwidth because sometimes that trips us up. And now what I wanna cover with you is a little bit of the the beginnings of Sage Intact. So if you've never seen Sage Intact, I've logged into uh, an environment that is a not-for-profit environment, and it is one that I am managing multiple uh, entities in. So I have the ability to set up entities or companies, if you will, and I also have the ability to change those entities and call them funds if I choose to. So this gives me a listing of all of the funds that I have set up as entities in this one instance of Sage Intact. Now I've logged in as Carla today. She is the controller and as the controller she has permission and rights to go pretty much anywhere in the solution. Just know that when you set up those users, you will be able to grant them permission. And I say this because you may want to set up specific information for your board members. You may want to give them access to a dashboard, and you may want to set that up as a view only. So just know that Carla's my super user today. However, you can control the permissions and where people can land when you set them up as a user. Now, one of the other things that I just want to mention quickly is very easy for you to ramp your team on how to use this solution. You're going to see me moving through and navigating some different ways today. Everything's in English here. Everything is consistent. It's either, you know, traveling through a menu system, which I think everyone is pretty well comfortable with, or traveling from what we call an overview map. So we now we've got some icons that we can click on and move into the software. We have five different ways that you can navigate. So whether you're using one of the quick ways by gold starring something as a favorite, or you're setting up a personalized bookmarked menu or or custom navigation, you have lots of ways to move around in the software. Easy to learn, easy to maintain. So let's put on our board member hat for a moment, and let's just start with the end at the beginning. So when we think about that, that board member, uh, what is that board member interested in seeing? 
And so what we want to do is we want to think about that before we create this dashboard. And again, if you open this up for your board member, this could be a view only. So the first thing that I see on this dashboard are some performance cards. Remember, these are that quick business insight. It's where I've taken operational data and many times I've used that to give you that snapshot of how the org is tracking. So in this case, it might be around the number of clients that I've served or how efficient my programs are performing. Perhaps it's about fundraising expenses or admin expenses or calculating that fundraising efficiency percentage. You'll notice that there's some visual indicators. There's also some times where I'm comparing it to a prior period, or I could compare this to a budget. So that gives me that, that quick snapshot. As I move down this dashboard, you'll see that I start to, to have some visuals that are important to my board members. The first one here is a statement of financial position for the 958. And when I look at this, I, I can look at several different things. So let's just open this report up so you have a better view of it. And when we look at this report, we, we, we're looking at two different years here. We're also looking at uh, actual data with an increase, decrease, and specifically in part of our formatting, we have put a notation out here. So how many of you have, have ever gotten in a meeting and someone asks you a question about something on a report and you're like, oh geez, I don't know. I'll have to do some research on that. Wouldn't it be great if before you got to the meeting, you're looking at this and you're doing your own analysis and you say, gosh, I wonder what the, what the deal is here with the liability section. Oh, oh I, I remember what happened. And so you make that note right here on the report. So if I'm the board member looking at this, and maybe I'm looking at it in my office before the board meeting, I can answer my own questions because now I have that notation here. If you've given me access into the system, even in that view mode, I have the ability to drill down into this information. So, you know, I might say, well, I want to look at some of the information here and I want to drill into it. So I can certainly do that. If I come back up and you're going to have to bear with me for just a moment because I need to get rid of this. Um, these meeting controls. There we go. I got rid of that so I can see my other tabs. So if we come back to the dashboard, you'll notice that I have a graph here. So again, I want to see how we're trending in cash. I don't need all the details. All I need to know is I, I want to see that visual. If I needed to know the details, I've got them and I can flip between the data and between the visual. So that gives me that ability when I define that graph. I've also got my net assets here and then I've chosen to pull up a statement of revenue and expenditures where I'm comparing my actual to budget. And remember I said that along the line, you may want to have some alerts or triggers. So that's what I've done with the color coding here. And with this color coding, it's alerting me to areas that maybe I want to drill a little bit deeper into. So one of the things that I want to drill in here is I may want to see something in a particular area here. So I might say, well, let's go down in here in the expense area. And I see that, you know, I've got several things that have got this red color here. Let's take a look at office supplies and let's look at, uh, let's just look at the actual to date uh, transactions here and let's kind of see what's going on. So this is going to drop me right into the general ledger and it's going to allow me to see that detail. It's also going to tell me what type of transaction it is. So just by the journal code here, I can tell when my AP bills came in, they were posted to the AP journal, and when I wrote those checks and paid those bills, they were posted to my cash disbursements journal. If I chose to, I could go in and look at an individual bill as well. So if I want to know more about this $1,000 entry, I can view that 
source transaction and I can see all the information about it including the fact that it's been paid and what check number paid it. I also want to point out to you what makes this information so valuable is the way that we have structured the coding. So take a look at how I've coded this AP bill. I've coded it to office supplies but I've also tagged it to what we call dimensions. So you heard me talk about funds and entities to begin with. So this is a transaction that is from our vendor Able Courier and I've coded it to office supplies but I've also included the tagging to multiple dimensions. So it was tagged to the general fund. It was an unrestricted transaction to a specific department and site and this did not have anything to do with a project or grant. So when I look at this data and I see that it's tagged to these dimensions, this also becomes a way that I can filter the data for reporting. So just know that every time you see these dimensions, think about how you want reports to come out. If you want to see a report that's by vendor, by customer, or by donor, by department, by fund, those are all data points that you can filter on individually and collectively. So having that ability to look at that source transaction right from the dashboard is available in any of these reports. And then the last thing that I wanted to share with you is the statement of financial position. And these are some of the reports that you might think are pretty standard for a board member to want to see and have access to. So here what we're talking about is, you know, information uh, again, comparing this across two years and seeing the difference here and again having that drill down capability. With this you can see that I've defined it the way that I want to see it. Um, perhaps I want to look at you know one of these accounts, maybe I want to look at accounts receivable. Again allowing me to drill in to the ledger, drill into any transaction and in this case we're on the receivable side not the payable side and now we're able to see that AR transaction where we're billing for this award. And again, this is going to allow us to tag that to all of those dimensions for that dimensional reporting. Now, this is all based on what you choose to open up and share with your board members. Now, let's just say that you don't want to create a dashboard for them. You'll create that dashboard for your internal people, however you're not going to extend it to your board members. How else would you send them information? So let's go to our report center. And one of the things that I want to point out is that reporting is so important in Sage Intact that we have a complete report center here. So when you look at this report center, all of your reports are here. Everything is here for you to choose and list out. If I go into just my financial reports, you'll see that I have some options on how I can deploy them. And deploying them might be just to view them or print them, send them out to a CSV format, to a PDF format, or as promised, here's the option for me to send them out to Excel. What I also have is a scheduler. And let me show you how the scheduler is going to help you at end of month or at board member time. So what I've done is I've created what we call a board packet or a report group and I've scheduled that so that I can send that out to my board unattended. So no one has to sit and print reports and attach them and send emails and all that. I've set it up on a scheduler. I've set that up with a start and end date and I've said I'm going to call that the monthly financials report group and in that report group I'm going to say who I want this to be delivered to. So with that I can say here's a cover letter I may explain you know this is our uh, updated information for our upcoming board meeting please take a, a moment or two to review these reports and then I can send that cover letter out 
and send it right out to a delivery list of people and I don't have to manually do that. So the scheduler will take care of that for me automatically. So when I think about what reports I'm going to set up, I always want to think about reports for different types of roles. So we've talked a little bit about the board member. If you look at my list of dashboards here and specifically look at my role-based dashboards, you can see that I have a lot of different dashboards created here. So along the way, you may have someone who is a program manager and they want to see their information. So their dashboard is created with the information that's important to them in their role. And you can see, you know, that same type of, of mantra where we have visual indicators, we have that color coding. So immediately if I'm a program manager, I can see where I'm in trouble, where I'm doing okay. So again, create as many of those dashboards as you choose to. We looked at the board member. We looked at um, the, the um, program manager. Let's look at the month end report. Uh, pardon me, the month end dashboard. So if you wanted to set up a month end dashboard, these are some of the things that you might want to put on that dashboard. You might want that checklist. Most of us use a checklist to make sure that we don't forget things at month end. So incorporate that checklist. Assign those activities to people and keep track of them. Maybe set up that view to know what has been closed. So that closed through summary. Perhaps a trial balance and a general ledger and even uh, some of the approvals that might need to be done. So again, having these dashboards is a way for you to containerize that information and put it into one place. There's one other area that um, I just want to cover, and that's really quickly. Um, if you are not maybe part of the board, maybe you're just that controller that's really interested in how am I going to get the information that I need, and most of that is financial information. Again, your dashboard is going to have some different types of information on it. And in this case, it's things around expenses and AR and AP and what does my cash look like. So again, just building this out, pulling in the information that's important to you is as easy as you just adding different components to this dashboard. And if you don't like where they're at, it's drag and drop. I like to refer to it as the adult Etch-a-Sketch, so you can get as creative as you choose to in building out these dashboards. So in closing, I just want to remind you that what's most important when you put together the board book is completeness and accuracy. And in order for you to have the accurate information, it needs to be information that you can trust, that you know is correct and you know that you want to share with the board. So having the ability to design and define your own reports, to put them into a board type of dashboard, or to put them into one of those report packets and send that information out to your board members. This gives them an opportunity to review that information and then attend that board meeting and ask those questions. As you review it, don't forget, you can put those notations on there. You can put them on there before you send it out to the board member, or you can put that out on, on there before you have the board meeting so that you're never caught off guard. You're never in the dark with what's going on because you have all that information and that drill down capability. So Nicole, I'm going to let you take it back now. I've got it. And that leads us into our next poll question. Let me get that going. Okay. And I think Brian's going to take this one. Yeah. Uh, well, first, um, thank you for that wonderful presentation. I'm excited every time I see you do this, Linda. It's, um, you know, being from the accounting side of, of life for a number of years, uh, there's so many really good things here that didn't exist not too long ago. And so uh, our folks that use this particular product really, really enjoy it and, and really have found it to add a lot of productivity to their daily work life. So our third poll question 
is are you uh, integrating solutions together today? And if so, how many might you be integrating? We found that about 75% of customers use two or more integrations with Sage Intech. It's very common to do so. And it's not a scary thing like it was maybe back in the 90s. Um, you know, I like to tell people the general rule is pretty much anything can be integrated. And, and uh, you know, it's we, we pretty much stick by that. So if you have systems that need to talk to each other, um, you know, we can easily get that done. And so no need for things to be siloed and, you know, copy out of one and, and type into another. For the most part, those days, thankfully, are long gone. So um, so I'll be curious to see, Nicole, um, what the response is here, just because our general rule is people have at least two and sometimes more integrations. So we'll see if that uh, holds true here with this crowd. Yeah, I'm going to close the poll in about five seconds. So if you want to get your last minute answers in. And four, three, two, one. There you go. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's one to three. So still uh, what we typically see. And, uh, and so that's good. It's, uh, like I said, it's pretty common nowadays. There's, there's almost... Uh, you know, there's almost no one that, that doesn't have something they can integrate from someplace else. So, so good. Very good. Thanks, Nicole. And, you know, Brian, I just want to add really quick mm -hmm. here. That is important and a core tenant of Sage Intact. Mm -hmm. The reason I bring that up is because we're going to help you protect the investment that you've made in that mm -hmm. other application. So let's just say that you have a member management solution and you love it and it's working great mm -hmm. and you don't want to change that. You've already educated your team and you're you know, perfectly happy with keeping that application. We want to help you keep it and helping you keep it means that we're going to create that integration if it's not already created, which we, there are many that are already done. And that's going to connect those two systems together seamlessly. So as Brian said, if, if you experienced integrations many years ago, and this is, this is not the same process. This is not this, this is not your mama's integration. This is a new one. Yeah. yeah. This is a new one. Yeah. Exactly how I was thinking of it there. Linda. Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. Yeah. The tools are so much better today. It's just, it's so much easier to do these things. And we're not talking about customizing anything. It's just building that mapping and, and testing it and, and letting it do its thing. So yeah, great, great point there, Linda. I appreciate that. Great. Well, thank you, Linda, for, for that um, very uh, helpful, insightful demo. I know we've got a lot of nonprofit leaders that are here and would appreciate a lot of that functionality. Um, as we're moving on, we've got a few more slides and then we're gonna have a word from our sponsors over at USE and um, some of the benefits that they can they can offer. But as as we're closing, Brian, do you wanna kind of wrap up about, about nonprofits and, and our yeah. safety yeah, practices? I, yeah, thanks. Thanks, Nicole. And uh, uh, yeah, as I mentioned early on, about a third of our business today is uh, centered around nonprofit organizations. And so they've really come to appreciate the uniqueness of products like Sage Intact that are really built for them, that they're not trying to fit their little bit unique accounting model into a, you know, commercial off the shelf, one size fits all uh, type solution. And so, you know, that's a big reason why we teamed up with Sage Intact 14 years ago, because they had such depth in this nonprofit space. And, you know, outside of LBMC, there are many thousands of nonprofits really look to Sage to provide the Intech solution that really is right for them. And, uh, you know, from the large to the small. And so there's something in there for everybody, uh, which regardless of which size you're, if you're the very small or the very large or anyone in between, 
we found it to really be a strong solution and our nonprofit clients are delighted with the functionality that they have here with Sage Intech. So uh, thank you again, Linda, for that presentation and uh, appreciate your insights. And so Nicole, do we have any questions in the chat? Anything we can respond to before you steps up and talks about the, how they support us? We do have one question that we wanted to cover. And, and, and while we're talking, please feel free to use the, the chat or the Q&A option on your screen to ask any questions. This question is going to be about how Sage Intact handles reporting for churches as opposed to other nonprofit organizations. We're a religious organization, faith-based, and how it has special reporting needs. How does Sage differentiate between the two? Yeah, Linda, you want to take that and I'll chime in? Absolutely. I was uh I was going to say that, you know, we have different types of organizations, whether you're a foundation you're an association or certainly uh, any of the faith-based. And in fact, I'll go back to when I first started, Our some of our first nonprofit customers, clients, were in the faith-based vertical. And um, so we're very strong in churches and we absolutely take care of integrating with a lot of the churches we'll have uh, member systems. They'll have uh, bookstores within, you know, some of these mega churches. And so we're accommodating the integrations to those point of sale systems, to understanding how people are um, tithing and, and different campuses of ministries. We also have um, just released something called the Ministry Intelligence Tool. And this is specifically geared toward faith-based. So if that's something that you're interested in, I would encourage you to reach back to Brian and the team and say, you know, I want to know more about this because there's a lot of data that we can help you extrapolate to give you that vision of, of where your ministry is going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Great points there, Linda. Um, I would maybe just add, you know, some churches actually run schools now. And so, you know, yes. we have a number that that have either elementary or some K through 12 mm -hmm. and run a full blown, you know, many thousands, sometimes tens of thousands of students running through their educational system. And so uh, we've been very good and it's been very easy to adapt the software into handling that school function as well. And I know a number of churches we have that they do, as Linda pointed out, they have cafeteria uh, there outside of the school. They have uh, bookstores, they have coffee shops, they have other, uh, you know, fundraising events and organ mm -hmm. fund and so forth. Very easy to track uh, that information inside of Sage and Tech. So we'd love to talk to you about the uniquenesses of the churches, but we haven't seen anything yet that we could not easily handle. That's right. Those dimensions are the key to all of that mm. data analysis and getting yeah. that granular data. Yes. All right. Great. Thank you both so much. Mm -hmm. um, now I'd like to introduce Tep Lands, our partner um, over at Use, and they're going to talk a little bit about how Use can help the nonprofit organization. Thank you, Tep, for joining us today. All right. I knew I was going to do that. I was going to say hello and I was going to be on mute. It's a classic <laughs> mistake that I always make. So sorry about that. Thank you for None of us me. have ever done that, right? Ever. <laughs> Everybody does it, but I was like, don't do it, don't do it. And I did it. All right. But thank you for joining us. Welcome. Um, I appreciate you guys giving me a chance to speak a little bit about Use. Um, if you can go to the next slide. Use was born in the cloud in 2010. So we have offices in Europe, in U.S. and Europe. Uh, we're tracking about 40 percent growth um, plus growth per year. Um, we go over a thousand plus R&D man out a year, uh, 100 plus AI and ML scientific publications. We do have one single focus, and that is automatic document processing. That's it. We want to specify. We want to be perfect, perfect as best as we can in that area. So we're focusing just on that. 25% um, of our income is reinvested into R&D annually. So that's a big thing that a lot of companies don't do, but we reinvest because we want to stay relevant. We have been shown as a great place to work, we're certified in 2022 through 2023. I can testify to that. Some fantastic people here. Uh, we're over in 40 plus countries, 5,000 plus clients. 
200,000 companies, over 300,000 users. We process right now over 200 million documents yearly. And we are over 1,700 Sage clients. So Sage Intact, which we have a very strong direct API connection with, but we do everything with 50, 100, 200, 300, and even X3 integration. All right, so why API automation matters for nonprofits? So one of the big things is it ensures transparency with detailed audit trails. So you can follow everything so you know where everything goes and who's touching it and when it's being touched. It eliminates manual data entry and increases accuracy. It's user-friendly for staff with varying levels of accounting knowledge. So from your CFO down to your AP clerk, it's going to be an easy transaction, easy for them to use and see what's going on. And it gives staff more time to focus on the core mission, which is important. Here we have a case study. I'll let you guys read the case study. It's from Unity. It's a nonprofit. They have about 200 invoices a month in their ERP is Sage Intact. Uh, Unity is a foundation that was established in 1990 to support an inclusive community and provide important services. On top of their financial and reporting needs, Unity realized that they needed an efficient and transparent process capable of managing accounting variances, consolidating financial statements, and ensuring business continuity. So with employees working remotely and the group homes isolated from one another, there was a lack of efficiency in circulating paper for approval. Use was the solution for Unity to easily accommodate all the variances between their three entities. Unity experienced time savings, ease of implementation, and easy tracking and reporting of funds. One thing that stood out is that the Use system also made the AP process user-friendly, allowing employees to focus on the organization's mission. So Unity continues to rely on Sage Intact and Use to power an efficient accounts payable process. So finally, I'm going to touch on how you use um, automate your AP. So the process is structured with five phases that will, that I'm going to walk through shortly. We keep the UI simple on the surface, so you don't need to deal with all the complexity within. It just makes your life just a little bit easier. After purchase, the automation experience begins with capture. So again, it's a seriously powerful OCR engine that transforms a static invoice image into an actual live ERP data. If you guys decide to do a demo with us, we'll be able to show you uh, how we can ingest those invoices into use. Customized workflows route that invoice for verification, approval, and release of payment based on the specific parameters that you designated and control to match your company's requirements. Workflows can be as hands-on or alternatively as no touch as you like. Again, it's depending on the parameters that you set based on the invoice size, type, and company. Works. And lastly, export. All your invoice data and the record of its accompanying path through workflows is exported to your ERP automatically. All right. Thank you, Tep, for that overview and for um, the information about use. We do have a poll question here. It's our last poll question of the day. It's going to be Which of the following does your nonprofit organization struggle with? I know we've got limited budgets and resources, complex and paper heavy processes, preparing for audits, complex approval processes, or all of the above, the catch all. I'm sure these are all different types of challenges for nonprofit organizations today. They, or they are, and I, I heard something yesterday that was a little surprising to me that um, there are a lack of auditors availability and that some uh, companies and organizations are having a tough time getting their audits done because of the lack of auditors. And I said, well, gosh, I didn't didn't realize that. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, having all your stuff together, you can even create one of those dashboards for your auditors. So another reason that dashboards can be helpful. Mm -hmm. We'll give it just a few more seconds here. Let people get their answers in. All right, in the poll and share the results. Looks like we've got a bunch of people balancing different challenges. Mm -hmm. I think all of us are trying to do more with less, right? With limited budgets and resources. Yeah. yeah. Yes, that's a common thread these days. It sure is. Great, well, thank you.
All right, here is um, TEP's contact information. If anyone uh, would like some more information on use, we'll include a downloadable asset in the follow-up so that you can also contact um, us or your partners at use, to find out how some automation can help your organization. All right, let me see if we have any other questions here. I don't see, I do have one actually. How long does Sage Intact take to implement on average? Mm -hmm. Oh, I can probably answer that since that's what we do every day. Uh, you know, it depends. Um, that's a good question, though, and one that everybody wants to know. Generally speaking, we tell folks in the nonprofit space, allow about 90 days to get that done. If you have complexities, maybe you have a, a, a retail store or that cafeteria or a school um, in, in the, the facility, then sometimes that takes an extra month. And if there's extensive integrations, we wanna make sure those are right. Um, you know, And of course you'll have payroll to handle at some point. So we have to deal with that, but usually three to four months is, is a pretty good rule of thumb, Nicole, on that one. Great, thank you. Um, if we don't have any other questions, nobody's putting anything in the chat. One thing I did want to point out about our partnership with Sage Intact is when you partner with Sage Intact and LBMC, you, you get the benefit of a, of a very experienced and large team. And we offer some great other um, aspects of our partnership, including quarterly trainings. So all of these dashboards and reports that you're seeing today will continue with ongoing trainings for you and your team um, four times a year. Those are CPE eligible, but making sure that our clients get the full use and functionality out of their software and really become power users is, is what our mission is. So we want you to love your investment as much as, um, as much as possible. So thank you, Linda, and thank you for Brian for presenting today and for talking about how we can help nonprofits get board ready with Sage Intact. Absolutely. Thank you so much. One thing I did want to point out, we've got two last slides here. We do have an exclusive offer for today's webinar attendees. Brian mentioned at the beginning of the beginning of the webinar that we do offer a lot of different services, and one of those is um, being your Microsoft partner. So for the nonprofits that are attending today, we have a special promotion through the end of June. Um, you can choose LBMC as your Microsoft partner um, transfer, and we'll work with your licenses, and you'll get 20% off licenses through the remainder of 2024. If you're interested in taking advantage of that offer, you can send us an email, info at lbmctech.com with Microsoft in the subject line, and we'll follow right back up with you. You'll also be getting, as I mentioned previously, some follow-up um, emails with the recordings. Feel free to also reply there if uh, either talking about Microsoft or talking about how we can help your nonprofit with Sage. Um, we'd love to have that conversation with you. Absolutely. This is one of a series of webinars. So we will continue our nonprofit finance leader webinar series in August, October, and December. We will touch on different topics and aspects of the financial um, leaders' needs for, for nonprofit organizations. In between there, if you're in the healthcare industry, we also offer a healthcare webinar series. Our next healthcare webinar is July 9th, and we'll be talking about handling multi-entities in healthcare. Thank you all for attending today and for joining us. Uh, we hope you found the information valuable and, and we look forward to talking with you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Linda. Thanks Nicole. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Bye.